There are people who even giving water in their house is painful to him. It's like they are draining his blood. Talk less of giving food to people. Somebody press the bell. Hey. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He hides the food. <laughs> but when you live in love, everything can be given. Lovers of God are givers to God. If you are not giving, you are not loving. There are people who can give to their wife. They can give to their children. It's time to pay children's school fees. It's moving up and down as if the money does not exist. Why? Every time money comes from him, it's like blood is being dropped. So when you love, you don't have difficulty giving. Sometimes when I give, people ask me, don't you like that thing again? I say, I gave it because I like it. Real giving will cause you natural pain. But because of your love, you can't hold it back. How did Abraham give his son? Because of love. A child you have waited for for 25 years and is now growing and he has become the toast of the family. I can see them in that family calling Isaac, Isaac, oh. He was an, a toast in the family. And one night God said, hey, come on, bring your Isaac, oh. And Abraham said, it's painful, but I love you. I just love you. Take the Isaac back. And God said, you have demonstrated your love again. Take back your Isaac. Take back your Isaac. So giving is made possible by love. Say loud, amen. amen. What more? Prayer works by love. Don't pray for somebody without love in your heart for that person. What makes prayer work is that you genuinely love the person that you are praying for, even when the person does not deserve your love. Hear this? Genuine love is exhibited towards people who don't deserve it. Jesus said, if you love those who love you, what reward have you? God so loved the world that hated him. The world hated him, yet he loved the world to the extent that he gave the most precious thing that he had. Real love is shown to people who don't deserve it. So when you look at your spouse, by action, he or she does not deserve your love. Still go and show your love. You don't think your wife has done well. Just look at her again and tell her I love you. You have dismantled the, part, the, the devil. He doesn't like that language. And if you feel so bad, you don't want to say it looking at her. You can, from the back, tell her, I love you anyhow. <laughs> love you anyhow. <laughs> Hallelujah! That's a language Satan does not like. And that's the language of relationship. In a home where you hear all the time, I love you, Satan cannot break through that home. You tell your children, you know many people don't have the knowledge of home management. That's why the home is scattered. You hear it from me every day to my wife, to my children, to all who live with us, and to all who come around me. Love you, brother. Your future is very bright. Yeah, I know you'll do great. Failure is not you. Your child came back with an re examination report, and it took second position from the back. <laughs> and you started bullying the child. Can you see, you have wasted my money again. You are like mother, dullard. I don't know what I'll do with you again. You better go and look for work to learn. You have demoralized him. You have killed him. Teacher said you failed. Father said he failed. So who will say to him you have succeeded? I don't have a failure child. The public may say so, but not in my home. And I own the child. And the owner of the child is one who controls the child.
A mother said to me sometimes ago, he said, sir, what you spoke about this child about two decades ago is working. What was it? I told that child, everybody in their family said the child will not do well based on examination results. That child just graduated with many awards. What are we saying? When you pray, pray with love in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Now, but why do we need the spirit of love? There is love and there is the spirit of love. You choose to love. But sometimes your love will be challenged. And that's when you need empowerment. Empowerment. There is decision to love. And there is empowerment to love. Everybody makes a decision. For instance, you made a decision. You decided to be born again. But you need the power of the Holy Spirit to remain born again. That's why after they were born again, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And after they've been filled with the Holy Ghost, they were refilled with the Holy Ghost. And again, refilled with the Holy Ghost on a continuous basis. I hope I'm making sense. Matthew 24, verse 12. Satan will always want to detach you from God by tampering with your love. Love ties you to God. Sin detaches you from God. Look at that. Jesus prophesying, because iniquity shall increase, the love of many shall wax cold. That is, they will become frustrated. They will come to a point and say, well, I don't think it's necessary to follow God again. Iniquity will increase, but love can also increase. The deeper your love for God, the more difficult it is for the devil to catch up with you. Listen to this. Any fish that plays around the shore will be caught by fishermen. But the fish that does not want to be caught will go into the deep. Now you see, if you have been around the fishing area before or in the farm, like some of us did, you will understand the difference between water and deep. A few times I've been with people who are looking for fish. You scrape the water and then you get to the mud where the fish goes to hide. They go to the depth. You scrape the water off and you think there is no fish there. And at that point, we start digging out the mud. What does that mean? The deeper your love, the less Satan can see you to tempt you. You know there are people who look temptable. I tell, especially young people. They say they, they are tempting me. They are tempting me. They are tempting me. Because you look temptable. There is a way you look that sinners will be afraid of you. How won't they tempt you? Look at the way you are appearing. You look temptable. How would they not tempt you? Hear your language now, the way you greet people. Oh boy, how are you doing? You are like them. But you appear in the place, you say, God bless you. They know that this one is a no-go area. That's how I've kept my life. I confront you first with righteousness because you will confront me with your sin. You are blessed. When I say you are blessed, you know that you can't see, speak a dirty language. Peace be unto you. You can't say, oh boy, how you day? Okay, how you day? How now? <laughs> That's not what the scripture taught us as believers. He said, when you enter a place, say, peace be unto this house. He said, you shall say, it is well. You cannot follow the system of the world 
and escape the trap of the world. Let's get back. Don't tell me that, you know, in this modern age, what is modern age? There is no modern Christianity. Christianity is Christianity. One blood saved us. Till next year, it will be the same blood. Don't allow your faith to be corrupted by evil communication. Don't follow the tradition of men. You want to be a believer? Be a believer. You want to be a sinner? Get on to the other side. Don't pollute the faith. Don't misrepresent Christ. You want to dress like them? Dress like them. You want to dress like a proper child of God? Dress like a proper child of God. Jesus didn't change his dress to look like the world before he saved the world. You don't have to look like them to save them. You may move close to them, but don't behave like them. I go to drinking joints, but they know that I'm not there to sit down with them to drink. I'm there with power to rescue them. You cannot look like the world and escape the trap of the world. At your workplace, let your language be clear. Among your colleagues, before your boss, before they sell temptation to you, display righteousness to them. Not everybody is temptable. Not everybody is temptable. They want to push you. Push yourself back into righteousness. They ask you, want to drink? Don't say, no, I don't want to drink. Tell them I'm a child of God. They don't use language that will make people to continue to tempt you. They may think you don't like the drink they give to you. If you say, I don't like this one, they may think you like 10% or 20% alcohol, so they'll go and bring it. <laughs> when I travel and they ask me, uh, what will you drink? I tell them, what I'll do. they say, what about wine? Come on, I don't take that. I'm a child of God. They look at me, they can't understand it, but they have communicated, and they know that that means don't bring this one. Are you with me, please? Satan will want to tamper with your love with God. You will not be a victim. I say you will not be a victim. Raise your hand and shout, my faith will not fail. Because my love will not fail. Say it again, my faith will not fail. Because my love will not fail. Good news for you. When you truly love God, He makes all things to work together for your good. Because love is a working machine. Romans chapter 8, verse 38. Love, 28 rather. Love is a working machine. And we know that all... In Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. Remember ye not the former things. Love does not remember negative. Love proposes positive. Remember ye not the former things, former failure, former setback, former anything. Neither think or consider the things of old. Why? Behold, I do a new thing. Former things is entrance to new things. So when you dwell in old things, you are forbidding God from doing new things. And now, now, say with me, now. I want to hear you very well. Tomorrow? Next week? Next year? Who is that going to happen for? Who will it happen for? Now he shall spring forth. That means he's been waiting to spring forth. But because you have been looking at old things, he cannot spring forth. New things cannot manifest until old things disappear. Shall he not know it? Say, I know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Please stretch forth your hand there, everybody. If your situation looks like a wilderness right now, I declare that a way be made for you out of it. I declare waters to spring forth for you from the desert. 
Somebody shout another loud amen. amen. You will not die in the wilderness. Amen. You will not end your journey in the desert. Amen. Very shortly, I'm beginning from today. Dryness shall be over in your life. Amen. Somebody in this church was reminding me of his testimony yesterday. According to him, years back, maybe about 20 years ago, he came to this church. He borrowed money to travel from Joss to this church. Nothing was working. And he had a teaching, like you are hearing this morning. Don't look at the past. Look forward. Focus was the teaching according to him. And from there, he got less than 10,000 naira and started business with it. According to him, he was telling me yesterday, they ate rice only either at Easter or Christmas. And things began to work. And from there, they increased rice eating to once in a month. And from there, they improved once in a week eating rice. And today, interestingly, he has a rice meal. Don't let your past tie you down. Let your past pass away. Let your past pass away if you don't want to pass away with it. You see, people discuss the past, the wise proclaim and declare the future. Don't remind me of my past. Show me my future. That's what God does. Don't remind me of my past. Show me my future. Past retards. Future advances. And like I said humorously in the first service, look at your physical future. Why did God put your two eyes in front? So you have no business? Why didn't he put it at your back? Now, he has given you power to keep looking forward, except when you turn to look backward. See, I will not turn to look backward again. I didn't hear you well. Keep looking forward. Keep looking forward. God said I would do a new thing. So wake up every day. Where is the new thing? For as far as your eye can see, so he will give to you. I know. Have you observed babies? When they are growing up, sometimes they smile because they are saying something. <laughs> they smile. They are saying something which you cannot see. That's how you should be as a babe in Christ. You are a child of God. Start seeing future in your future. You may be down, but don't let your eyes close. You may be down, but don't be blind. I don't know where some of you came out from this morning. Maybe a face me, I face you room. And maybe you may even be a squatter there. You took your bath this morning from those kind of bathroom. I know you know what I'm talking about. You are not the first to be there. I was there before. When I bath, I close my eyes. I don't want the environment to stick to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One minute, I'm out. Joseph was in the prison. The prison was not in him. They hated him. He didn't look back to hate them. They covered the wells of Joseph, of Jacob. He didn't Go back to fight them. He was moving forward. You covered my wealth. You can't stop my wealth. You covered my wealth. The wealth. Because you can see it. And you think that's the source of my wealth. I leave you there. When people steal from you, leave it for them. They can steal what you have, but they can't steal what you see. 
Because what you see is ahead. What you have is on ground. Leave them on the ground. Fly to the top. Stop looking backward. Stop looking around you. Because God wants to do a new thing. As a young couple, my wife and I, we had no fridge, no television, no cooker, no air conditioner, in the midst of heavy heat. But we will not look at it. I see a future in my future. God told me we will do a new thing. I'm looking forward to new things. Stop describing the old things. Start proclaiming the new things. I saw myself pastoring the church of four people, seven people, 12 people, 18 people, 15 people, 30 people, 32 people. On the day my wife came to join me, we were 32. Church was so full. We were so excited. We took photographs. Every church member, one snap. They gave us food flask. Maybe they saw I wasn't eating well. To charge her, make sure this man eats. Flask was there. What about food inside the flask? Well, they didn't see it. We saw what God said he would do. I would do a new thing. What you don't see, God cannot give. He said, as far as your eyes can see, so will I give. Shout with me, a new dawn. What is your portion this week? Now, say a new beginning. What's your portion this week? Say with me, new open doors. What do you see this week? Proclaim it again. And what? New dawn. New beginning. Did you hear the testimony shared this morning by someone? Ready to commit suicide. To finish his life. Now, life will stop at the point you want it to stop. God never empower any situation to kill you. Trials are not meant as a trap. They are meant for triumph. It's only a passage. Don't kill yourself there. Problems are passages to solution. Obstacles are passage to miracles. Stumbling blocks are meant to be stepping stone. Challenges are meant to turn out champions. I'm excited. You know why? I can see a future in your future. Perhaps I'm saying something you are not saying. Very soon, and even now, you are saying it. Say with me, I see. What do you see? Say with me, a future in my future. Who will testify?